Hey everyone, I'm Hot Rod Jen, and today I'm going to be going over gold leaf stuff, gold leaf, variegated leaf, spin tools, brushes, all that stuff, sizing. Um, the more we know about the tools, the better we can understand what we're going to be doing with our tools. So, hope you follow along. This is going to be a total geek out moment. Hope you don't mind that. I don't mind it because I love learning about little things. So, uh, follow along, subscribe. I'm going to be doing other videos in the future about how to gold leaf and how to use imitation leaf and, you know, what the best things are for that and all that stuff. So, subscribe, follow, like, comment, share, whatever. Uh, hope you enjoy. Thanks. Okay, everyone. So, I'm going to be first discussing the leaf itself. All right, so first off, this is gold leaf. This is the real deal gold leaf. This is patent leaf. It's stuck to the sheets like that. And there's different brands. There's all different brands you can get. Like this is WB, which I usually only use this um, for a lot of jobs. And this is Minetti. This is also, um, patent leaf. So this, this is a brand new pack. Leaf comes in different carrots, so there's going to be different tones, tones of the gold. So this is 16 karat gold, which looks very pale, almost like silver. And this is 23 karat. The lower you get in the number of karat, the more white gold it will look, the more silver it will look. So, and also when you get to a lower carat, this leaf is actually a little bit thicker than the 23, 24, 22. So that plays into, the thicker the leaf is, it plays into when you uh, lay it down on the sizing and how wet or dry you want your sizing to be for the leaf to adhere to it. So that, that comes into play later on. So I'm going to put this back in its little thing here. Now these, these are all patent. I do have loose leaf somewhere. I'll show you that, which I can be, that's old. Ah, so this is loose. This is not attached to the paper, so that is just freestanding gold right there. If you blow on it, it'll move. See? So that that's what a lot of the window and glass gold leaf people use. I'm going to put that back. So that's the difference between loose and patten. This is attached to the paper. This is what I recommend for beginners to get. If you're doing, we're going to be talking about surface gilding. We're not going to be talking about glass gilding today. I'm not um, efficient at glass gilding, so I'm not going to discuss it. So, I'll put this back there. Now, the difference between real leaf and Dutch metal, instantly you're, be, you're going to be able to see the difference. Now, a lot of people will say, Oh, here's real leaf, use it, use it. It's not real if it's this big. This is like three inches by three eighths by three inches by three eighths. That's like an instant standard size for a real leaf. This is fake leaf. Now this is variegated. I'll show you silver leaf first. Oh, here, I have some right here. Well, this is imitation silver, so this is aluminum leaf. There's a big difference in size, all right? I'm gonna stack these guys up, get them out of the way. So leaf that is this size, it comes in silver color, which is aluminum leaf. There's copper, 
They do make it in gold tones, which is imitation gold, and they also make it in variegated, which is chemically treated to have different patterns. Now this is Nebula. There's all different color tones for variegated, all different patterns. This is cut up, so this is why this looks smaller. Um, here's a nice red one. If I can get it out. Now most of the Dutch metal is loose. Oh, see, this looks like one tone on one side of the the leaf, where on the other side, if I can get it from the other and see the difference patterns just on one side that's more colorful where this one is just more copper looking so when you lay variegated leaf you have to be aware of what side you're putting down that way they kind of match because if I had this laid down and then next one I laid that down it would be a visible difference so now the imitation stuff that comes loose is a little bit harder to handle because it is loose but I'll show you I like using it loose because when you lay it you can lay it smooth and when I show you leaf videos about how to lay it I'll show the difference but see this is the the fake gold leaf this is patent fake gold leaf so it's Dutch metal but you see the texture on that that somewhat stays part of the leaf when you lay it I mean you can you can rub it out to make it like more smoother but I feel like the pattern the texture kind of stays and I don't like that so um, I usually always go for the loose Dutch metal this can be referred these fake leaves silver it comes in silver gold copper variegated you know etc it can be people use the term gold leaf and silver leaf and you know all that stuff even though it's not true um it can be called dutch metal imitation um fake uh there's other words for it but it has various terms for it so that's the big difference between the two sizes well, between the, the real and the imitation. Now, when you're getting into silver leaf for surface guilds, I don't recommend laying actual silver leaf because silver will tarnish even under clear. Even if you clear it within the hour, it'll eventually tarnish under the clear. So, oh, that doesn't go in there. This does. So, when you're doing surface guilds, now, silver has less chance tarnishing on glass and I'll show you how silver tarnishes this is really old so when you're doing surface guilds like panel like anything that's surface guild basically is vehicles um, frames um, panels you know all that stuff when you want silver on that kind of things you you can use white gold which also has a tendency to tarnish because it has a lot of alloys in it but also you can use palladium, which is a, which is real metal. It's more expensive, um, but it does look like silver and it won't tarnish. Or you can use that aluminum leaf, which is silver in color, of course. All right, so silver, a friend gave this to me. This is a company that is no longer in business, but this is all for glass. but I'll show you how silver can tarnish. Now this is really old, and only the edges really have seen air, and you can kind of see the darkness of the edging there. And here you can see it. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but I won't be able to use that on surface. Even if I clear, clear it right over, it will, it will tarnish. So, real gold fake sizes all right now let's go into tools all right so when you're using real leaf 
you can use velvet. These are all covered in real velvet. You can buy them. Like this is bought. I bought this from WB. You can buy it from Coast Airbrush. You can buy it from a lot of different gold leaf suppliers. This one's bought too. You can hand spin them or you can put them in a drill, which I do. Um, this one is made. This is wood under here. And then foam and felt and, you know, a whole bunch of different velvet. Velvet, there's a big, big difference between velvet. So these, like, this is a pad that I made. It's wood. And I padded it with foam and cotton. And then I put felt over it. And then I stapled it. Now this is so big that I spin it by hand. Same thing with this one. I spin it by hand. This is homemade. So this, this one is the biggest one I have for a drill. So anyway, if you don't want it, like these can be expensive. These can be like $25, $28. If you don't have the money right now to do that, this is the first one I ever made. And it's a valve from a 350 engine, Chevy engine. And all it is is rubber band. I remember I used a hair tie. It's not rocket science, but... I put cotton down, see the valve? Put cotton down, foam, foam you can get at any craft store, velvet, and you wrap it. Make sure you try to keep the puckering down, because if this material puckers and it's high up to the top, that'll catch your leaf and it'll rip it but there you go homemade spinner um this is homemade too i don't know who made that but it's homemade but velvet okay so velvet like this is this came with it and i'm not a fan of this velvet it's too weak in my opinion the more uh, throw the velvet has like the deeper the material is that you can swish back and forth that's not good you kind of need it to be shorter and I try to find a hundred percent cotton like this is vintage cotton and it's like my favorite and I got it from an old sign guy and I only had a little bit of it so I enjoy this one a lot and this you see how shiny that is I don't know if the camera picks that up, but it's really shiny. So it tells me that there's like a lot of like polyester or synthetic material in there. And this one's short and it's soft on the back. This one is not good velvet. It has a like a deep throw, like you, you can move it, you can feel it move back and forth. And it's also coated, I picked this up from an upholstery shop, and it's also coated with a material that stiffens the back of the fabric up for upholstery and that's not good either so I don't use this one obviously it was one of my first ones I learned since then um, this is nice and soft it has a good throw but anyway and then so these are all the the spinners I use for real gold if you are working with imitation Dutch metal you know uh, variegated and all that stuff these won't leave much of an impression on that material because this material is a lot thicker than the real leaf. So you need something more abrasive to make an impression on this to spin it. So you can actually take your velvet spinner, if you have the velvet spinner, you can take, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this one because it has two O-rings right there for me. So, and you can make these by O-rings. So, this is soft. This is extremely soft. Like I said, I, I don't really like it. Um, and you can put even like a, like a paper towel, shop towel, what have you, on it. Now, this will make an impression on the variegated. Because it's, it's a more abrasive material. So, you can do that in a pinch. Also, in a pinch, 
This is a magic eraser by Mr. Clean. This will spin variegated imitation, Dutch metal, what have you. I'm going to put this back on here. So also what the people are doing now to spin um, imitation leaf, aluminum leaf and all that stuff is they're using Trizac sanding discs, which they're a little foamy, but they're um, Trizac 3000 or 5000. I use both and I can't tell you which one's which, but um, you can cut them up into little circles. And I honestly don't know where I got this or who gave that to me. I might have bought it from a hardware store. It might have been sent to me. I forget. But it has a Velcro. And because these are foam, these will attach. And this will spin the fake leaf. Okay? Now, I like it when there's cushion to them. Because this is so flat, it tries to walk on you when you're spinning it. And I'll go over that in a later video. But um, but this, oh, these are different. So this, can the screw on the back of there and see how that has foam? That spins really nice. And this is for the harder material only. Don't try using real gold leaf with that. Now this, these were designed for these, but I decided to glue velvet on them. And this works really nice on real gold because that's velvet. Same thing with this. Like this one is a Alpha 6 spinner. And I glued two of their foam pads together because one I thought was not enough foam or cushion and then I glued I do more real gold leaf work than imitation work so I glued the the gold I mean um, the velvet pad to that and that works all right so that's spinners that's a quick rundown on spinners and like these guys like I I pretty much make them now like I don't know if I made that or if I made it but now I'd, I'll just keep on gluing discs on top of those no big deal you can figure it out, you can make it your own. So when you're working with leaf, and this goes for a real leaf, imitation leaf, all that stuff. Once after you lay it on your size, you're gonna need to get the excess off and you can use, um, this is a makeup brush I bought from a local pharmacy. This I got from WB and this one is the Alpha 6. Um, my favorite one out of all of these is this one. It is super, super soft. So it does not really scratch the leaf when you're working with it. This one's a little stiffer, but it's all right for variegated or imitation leaf. This one is soft. You can use it for gold or imitation, but this one's super soft. Or you can use cotton to get rid of your excess leaf instead of using these. It's personal preference. I use cotton now. Um, velvet, I kind of talked to you about the velvet before, like this is the one that has the hard like sizing or glue on the back of it to make it strong for upholstery. That's not good for spinners. These are, this is 100% woven cotton velvet. Um, so this is made up all cotton and it's really good. It's a little abrasive, so you're gonna really need to have your size at the right point so you don't burn through it. But then this is a little bit softer. This is a cotton and poly blend. It's a little shiny, but the throw isn't, isn't deep. This one, I have that on most of my spinners. This is new to me, so, but this one works. It's really good. Um, and then sizing. So there's all different sizes out there. And then there's also, these are oil-based sizes. So when you use them, um, you need to clean your brushes out with a solvent, like mineral spirits, temp reducer, you know, all that kind of stuff. And um, this is ducks. I mainly use this, but there's ducks. There's a Luco, there's one shot, there's different brands. This is quick drying. So they say it's an hour. Some people say it's an hour. I lay it around two hours. 
um, for real gold, imitation leaf, variegated leaf, it goes on much quicker than that because it's a thicker material, so you need more glue for it to stick to it. This is this is made by Minetti. It is really nice. It's a three-hour size, but you need to cut it with um, a lot of turpentine for it to be in that three-hour zone. My best guild was like five hours with this, so um, this is slower, but it's considered a medium size. And then there's um, slow size, which can stay open over 24 hours, 30 to 6, six hours. I don't really use that, but um, these are good oil-based sizes. There's also water-based size, which I don't have because I don't use it, but a lot of the uh, craft stores carry water-based size. I used it when I first got into leaf, and I quickly, quickly stopped using it. So um, if you kind of want to get a feel for it, you know, and you're waiting for your oil size to come in and you're using this, go pick it up from a craft store, try it out. You're end up not going to like it, but it can get, you know, a small job done. So, um, so there's oil base and water base. I don't have water base to show you, but then also if you're laying loose leaf on something, there's different ways to go about it. Um, a lot of the glass builders use loose leaf, of course, and they, these are called tips, gold leaf tips. So out of the book, you would pick you would pick the leaf up with this or this, depending on what size you're working with, and then lay it on your surface. If you're working on something that has a lot of different dimensions rather than flat, if you're going over um, something round like this, sometimes it's it's easier to use loose leaf and then you can just lay it on but these are tips which I don't I don't use them a lot obviously well this one I did but not that one so these are tips I don't think you really need those for learning surface guild so I wouldn't say run out and get them right away and uh, I think I covered everything so now you know the materials, the size difference, you know, this is, this is the size of real leaf, this is the size of uh, imitation, fake, Dutch metal, you know, whatever you want to call it. Sorry, I talk fast, that's what I do. Um, yeah, so hope that helps you. And the next few videos we'll be putting all these tools to work. See ya!